Hello there, I'm Chef Johnny. Today, we're smoking up chickens on the Ugly Drum Smoker. That's right, Texas-style cuisine, barbecued chicken halves on the UDS. We're gonna try to cook these up for you. I'm gonna show you kind of how I have my UDS uh, set up. I'm gonna show you how I cut up that bird, how I cut that back uh, bone out of it, how I cut that breast bone out. They will cook much more evenly if you have those things out of there. So stick around, come back, let me show you how I prep these chickens, how I get them on the Ugly Drum Smoker, and how nice and moist they turn out when they come off. So, we're gonna get to cooking these chickens uh, here on Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine today. Always appreciate you dropping by to see what I do. And, and you know, I cook a lot of chicken on here. I get a lot of requests for chicken. People watch my chicken videos. So, hey, I'm cooking chicken again. We eat a lot of it here at the house also, so it all comes in handy. But uh, I'm gonna show you how to cut this bird up. Today, I'm gonna use some shears. I kind of showed you how to do it before using a knife. I'll put a link for that, how to barbecue a chicken video. It shows you how I do it with a, a knife and, uh, and cut out that backbone. But we're gonna take out the backbone, take out the breastbone, then we're gonna season this baby up, get her on the pit. So let's get to cutting this chicken up. I'm just gonna take this great big old chicken and. Right here is this backbone, and I'm gonna go down each side of it. Take my shears, cut right up the side of that backbone. There we go, that side's done. Come to the other side. We're gonna go up the side a bit. Got the backbone out of there. I'm gonna open this bird up now, and I'm gonna take my knife, and uh, you can kind of see this kill bone. Here's the edge of the cartilage running right here. Well, I'm gonna cut on this side of it, and there's a little cartilage area, kind of a little triangle shape there, diamond shape, and you take it out, and I'm going up underneath that bone until I hit the inner bone. You can see that right there? Okay, that's, that's your uh, breast bone and I'm gonna cut straight down, and I'm gonna try not to leave any meat on that uh, breastbone at all, or very little anyways. So that one's there. Now what I'm gonna do is, is take out that other side. So tip it, cut through that cartilage, and then remember, we're going in. See how my knife is angled in toward that, that uh, breastbone? And I'm just gonna take the meat off of that, and look there. That's pretty clean. A Little bit of meat left on it, not a whole lot. Throw those out here in a second. You can save those for making stock. Uh, Y'all keep watching here real soon. I'm gonna have a video on making chicken stock. I do have a video on making uh, turkey stock that you can already see. But you can see this chicken is pretty clean. Uh, I will clean up any loose fat up here maybe. Some of this, you can take it and cut that off. And that was not too bad. If these were competition birds, of course, we'd be pinning down these sides and everything like that. But I'm gonna dry this bird off and then I'll get back with you and show how I uh, add my binder and add my seasoning. Now, I'm gonna take some French's yellow mustard. That's what I like is French's, so. And it doesn't take a bunch. We just want a thin layer across this bird right there. Turn him over. Now, if you could lay this bird in your refrigerator for a while uncovered and let it uh, start drying out that skin, that's never ever a bad thing. That's gonna help you a lot. Um, as far as the browning, it's, you gotta get rid of the moisture before you can start browning. So, that's what we do, is uh, we'll set it in the refrigerator uncovered, let it dry the skin out. And I tell you what, folks, you are not gonna taste this mustard. My sister hates mustard. And uh, when she first heard I did this to my chickens, she was shocked and was swore she would never eat it. She loves it, says she cannot taste it. There, that's done. Let me wash my hands off, get right back with you to finish these chickens up. Next thing we're gonna do is, is add our seasoning. I got some Crawford's Alamo dust. Very, very good. Picked this up the other day at Lone Star a Barbecue Pro Shop in Holotus, right outskirts of San Antonio. And I'll, I'll put a link down there for them. They're real nice. Brian Crawford's a good guy but this is his own. He sells a lot of other things in there too, but I like this real well, got some of it from him. So we're gonna season up these birds with his uh, pork and poultry season. 
One thing I want to make sure I do is, is this flap of skin right here, I want to lift it up so we get seasoning all the way on that leg. Season that up. You can see it's got some black pepper in here. I like pepper. Works really good on this. That one's done good. Do this one. So, get this side now. Nice, even coating. Get up underneath that wing. Gonna pick it up here and I get the back and the top of the wing. Same way here. Start at the bottom. Work my way up to the top. That one's ready to go. Two birds ready to go on the UDS. So uh, let's check the temperature. We want to cook these at about 300 degrees. If this pit's hot enough, we'll get them on there. And I'll kind of show you how I have it set up. Let's uncover this. Now, oh, got a little flare up. You see I was getting it hot, but uh, I've got about, uh, oh, I'd say about five pounds of charcoal in there maybe. I'll put in my grate and uh, I've got a, that's just straight lump mesquite. Don't like that fire, that's never a good thing. But uh, I've got both of my valves all the way open, one of my bottom valves open. These are three quarter inch pipes. But we're gonna take these birds, put them on here, and kind of push them together, right? Don't want them all spread out. They're gonna cook more evenly if we keep them together. Let's get that lid on here. That flame will go out, and those chickens can cook. Birds are going. We're gonna, I'm thinking about two hours. That was a great big chicken. So I'm thinking about two hours at 300 should render that skin out good. And we're gonna leave this chicken nice and moist. So uh, while we're waiting for that, it's not gonna take you long at all. It's gonna take me a while. But I uh, want you to do this. Go subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you know whenever I put out new videos. Always do appreciate that. And remember to share this video around. All right, folks, we got some good news and some bad news for you. Good news is we got the chicken off the pit. Bad news is you're not gonna get to see it. And also we're not gonna sauce it and put it back on there. I was gonna do one sauce, one unsauce. These are done so much, I do not wanna put them back on the pit. What happened was, and the reason that these got overshot that 165 is, is I used one of my digital thermometers. I threw one in the, in the pit, one in the chicken. And it seemed like it was moving kind of slow. So I thought, well, I need to stoke up the fire. So I got it hotter in there according to the uh, digital, but my outside gauge says I was way hot. And I thought, well, that digital's right. I'm going by it. It must have, that regular gauge must have got off. Well, I'll tell you what, my gauge was right. The digital was off. So I pulled these off to just to check them. I, it was saying they were about 140, 145 degrees, the two of them. And heck, I was like, those are more done than that. So I grabbed my, uh, my thermometer, put it in there, 180 degrees in the breast. So we're way over. So chances of these being moist are slim to none. But I'm gonna show you what they look like. We're gonna take them. We're gonna see uh, how that seasoning came out, how the uh, alamo dust worked. But folks, sorry about that. Now, normally I'd pull them off in that 160, right? Getting close to 165, sauce them, put them on there for another 15 minutes, set the sauce, and that would be it. But tonight, We've got chickens that have been done. The, the dark end should be fine. Dark meat does well with heat. It'll take a lot of heat. The breast is where it's gonna be dry, but I'm gonna let you look at that and show you what a, a dried chicken breast looks like. So let's uh, get a close up look at this. This was pretty bar dark down in here. This one's not bad at all. Darker than I would have wanted it to have been. And uh, in the the color sometimes is off. They, and I'm looking at my, my, looking at my, my monitor for my camera. It, these look really, really dark, but uh, I don't know how the picture is going to come out. But in this, they're not quite as dark as you might think. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and we're going to we're going to slice a piece of this breast off. It's tender. It's not tough. And you know what? It's still got some moisture in it. Look at that. It's not totally dried out. And the further we get into it, it's uh, it's going to get more moist. There you go. Not bad at all. But there's a look, kind of close up of that bird and what it looks like. We've got a nice smoke ring on it. Um, 
but again, it's just it's cooked too much. Folks, this chicken uh, turned out good. You know, it was dry. We knew it was gonna be, we took that breast up to, one was 170 something, one was 180. But uh, they're, they're pretty good chicken. There's still a little moisture left in them, but definitely cooked too much. It just goes to show you, don't trust the machine. You gotta check every once in a while because they can malfunction on you. And we're gonna check those and find out, see if they need to be calibrated or what, but they were wrong. But let's give this a, a try. Mm. I tell you what, I'm liking it. It's uh, got a good flavor. The rubs we used worked well. Uh, just like to have a little more moisture in that breast. Those thighs are gonna be fine. They'll they'll handle the heat better. They uh, they got a lot more moisture in them than the breast do. Tell you what, folks, just goes to show you even a professional gets it wrong sometimes. You know, hey, you're not always on your on your A game. I guess you're not always perfect, but. Uh, uh, these these are good. I hope you give this recipe a try. Use that ugly drum smoker. If you don't have one, you can build one for $100, $125. Uh, you can buy parts for as much as you want to spend to make them, or you can buy a drum smoker. But you can make your own $125, and you could be turning out some fantastic barbecue with an old 55-gallon drum. I've got a video on that. I'll put a link down below so you can see how to make one. But Hey folks, thanks for stopping by. Always appreciate it. Give me that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and we're going to see y'all down the road on Texas style barbecue and cuisine. Goodbye, everybody.